Hello friends, I'm Miss Melanie from Franklin County Library System's Grow Family Library and welcome to Fun with Pets. Choosing a pet is an important life decision, one that will affect not only the quality of your life, but the health and welfare of the animal that you're thinking of bringing into your home. There are a lot of things to think about when deciding which pet is right for you. Like space, do you have the right amount of room to keep that pet? Cost, do you have enough money to afford the things you need to house your pet and to keep it healthy? Activity level, do you like to run around and go really fast? You will not want a very slow pet. And your time commitment. Do you have enough time to care for it properly? So, and that's just a few. As you'll hear again and again, it's important to do your research. And this program is a great place to start. Today, we'll be talking about birds. We have a lot to cover, so let's begin by learning all about birds before we start talking about keeping birds as pets. Watch. <laughs> Introduction to birds. There are nearly 10,000 different kinds of birds in the world. They come in all sizes, shapes, and breeds. Some live on water and others on land. Some live in very cold places, while others live in extremely hot. But all birds have certain characteristics in common. Birds have feathers. The feathers help most birds fly. They also keep them warm. Feathers are water-resistant, which helps keep a bird dry when it's raining or when they land on water. Birds have two legs and two wings. Even birds that don't fly, like the emu, ostrich, kiwi, and penguin, still have wings. All birds have a beak or bill. The beak is used for moving things, eating, preening, which is how a bird cleans itself, feeding their young, and for killing their prey. All birds lay eggs, which produce baby birds. All birds are warm-blooded and have backbones, just like you and other mammals. The smallest bird on earth is the hummingbird. It weighs less than a nickel. Its eggs are the size of a pea or a jelly bean. A hummingbird's heart rate is more than 1,200 beats per minute, which is incredibly fast. Your heart rate is only 60 to 100 beats per minute. The hummingbird's wings flap at an average of 10 to 15 times in a single second. They move so quickly that they make a small buzzing sound. When a hummingbird dives, it can reach speeds up to 60 miles per hour. The largest bird on earth is an ostrich. An ostrich's eyes are about the size of a billiard ball, which is bigger than its brain. An ostrich is the world's fastest animal on two legs. The fastest human, Usain Bolt, is an Olympic gold medalist. His fastest speed is 27.8 miles per hour. But if an ostrich and Usain Bolt had a race, the ostrich would win the gold medal. It can run up to 43 miles per hour. It's a good thing the ostrich can run fast because even though it has wings, it cannot fly. Some birds like emus, ostriches, burrowing owls, and kiwis live on land, while other birds like penguins, gulls, ducks, geese, and swans live on or near water. Some birds live in very cold climates like the Arctic. These birds include the snowy owl, the peregrine falcon, the Arctic tern, and the puffin. The puffin is sometimes referred to as the clown of the sea because of its brightly colored bill. Other birds live in tropical climates. The rainforest is home to many beautiful and colorful birds, including toucans, macaws, and parrots. 
Not all birds eat the same things. Swallows prefer insects, but also eat berries. Bluebirds eat berries too, as well as nuts. Female bluebirds eat bits of eggshells when they need extra calcium to make eggs of their own. Other birds, like the bald eagle, are carnivores, meaning they live on meat, like mice, rodents, and fish. The pelican also eats fish. It uses the pouch under its beak to scoop up the fish like a fishing net. Most of a bird's body is made up of feathers and hollow bones. The bones don't weigh very much. Their light bones and strong muscle help them to fly for long periods of time. Birds' wings are useful for diving and soaring through the sky. Some birds must always flap their wings to stay aloft. But one bird, called the kestrel, can hover in place like a helicopter. Let's take a closer look at some birds you may have seen or heard of. The bald eagle is a beautiful bird. It has strong legs, beak, and talons or claws. It is the national symbol of the United States. It was chosen to symbolize the strength and freedom of America. The bald eagle is an important bird of Americans. If anyone were to hurt one, they could face a penalty of a quarter million dollars and go to jail. The blue jay is a songbird known for its intelligence. It can mimic the sounds around it. They do this to warn other blue jays of danger or to scare other birds away from a meal they want. There are hundreds of different species of owls. They have been known to swallow smaller animals, like a mouse, whole. Owls then throw up pellets, which are animal bones and fur that they could not digest. Owls can see well at night and are fantastic hunters. Some ducks sleep with one eye open. When they sleep in groups, the ducks on the outside of the group keep one eye open to keep a watch out for predators. The woodpecker is very small, but powerful. There are several different types of woodpeckers. Acorn woodpeckers make holes in trees, utility poles, and buildings so they can leave acorns there. Thousands of acorns can be stored in a single tree with each in its very own hole. Ravens can mimic the sounds of animals like foxes or wolves. They do this to attract a predator to an animal's carcass. Then the predator will break it open for them and they can have the leftovers. Ravens are not likely to learn any human words out in the wild. However, if they were kept as a pet, they can. Some ravens are even better than parrots at imitating human speech. They can also mimic sound like a car's engine or a toilet flushing. Homing pigeons can find their way back home. They were used for years to carry messages back and forth to people. They delivered important military information during World War II. They were also used during the early Olympic Games to fly through villages carrying messages of who won each event. While penguins might stand out on land, underwater, their coloring is a type of camouflage. As they swim, their black backs blend in with darker ocean water below, making it harder to spot them from above. And their white chests help them blend in with the lighter surface of the water, making them nearly invisible from below. However, on land, their black bodies stand out against a white landscape. But the penguin doesn't have many predators on land, so there is no need for them to be camouflaged there. Here are some other cool facts about birds. Birds flying south during the winter time because they are warm-blooded like you are. They do it to escape the cold. This is called migration. It may not be that different from you and your family escaping to Hawaii or another warm location during a cold winter. The chicken is the closest living relative to the Tyrannosaurus rex. Many birds kept as pets, including doves, parakeets, and lovebirds, enjoy living in pairs for companionship. And then there is the peregrine falcon, the fastest bird on earth, historically known as the duck hawk in North America. 
it can dive at speeds of up to 240 miles an hour. From their vibrant colors to their magnificent wingspan to the peaceful melodies they sing to welcome each day, birds are unique creatures that add beauty and diversity to our environment. Birds are fantastic creatures. And, as with all animals, not all of them make good pets. You may enjoy just observing birds in nature. Bird watching is a wonderful hobby, and you can start in your own backyard. If you are considering having a bird as a pet, you have a lot to think about. And to help us do that, we're joined again by Dr. Deanna Becker of North Paws Animal Hospital. Dr. Becker is not only a veterinarian, she's also a pet owner. Last week, we got to meet her bearded dragon, and this week, we get to meet a couple of her birds. Hi, Dr. Deanna. Hi, Melanie, how are you? Doing okay, excited about Good. those birds. Who do we have here? So this is Millie. Millie is a military macaw. Millie is about 30 years old. Wow. Yes, she's a good girl. Millie is, uh, she came to me as a rescue bird. Uh, she, she's been owned by a couple different people. And at her last home, she was a bit of a feather plucker. That's why she's a little bit of a naked, naked macaw. Um, but she doesn't pluck her feathers anymore. And that's because we give her lots of baths and lots of attention. Um, but she's 30 years old and these military macaws can live to be about 80. So she's not even middle, middle aged yet. <laughs> now is, is, uh, excuse me, is feather plucking a, like a nervous habit or is it because of a skin disease or? It is a nervous habit. It's usually they do it out of boredom. Um, so birds in the wild, and there are birds like Millie that, that live in the wild and in other countries, um, they spend about 60% of their time looking for food. And when we have captive birds like this, most people give them their food in bowls. Um, so 40% of their time in the wild, they spend doing other things like grooming themselves, bathing, um, having uh, friendly relationships with other birds, um, also having a mate and maybe the females will lay eggs. But when we put them in a cage um, or have them in a home environment and we hand them their food in a bowl, what do they do with that 60% of their time? They do the other things. And so some birds will over groom themselves. Some birds will um, lay eggs. Some birds will scream a lot more than what they normally scream um, in a healthy way. And so it's really a challenge with a big bird like Millie to an intelligent bird like Millie that lives 80 years um, to really give her a very full life and have her have a lot of things. And one of those things is having her look for fruit, food. We want to mock that 60% of her time looking for food. We want to try to make that happen for her. So we don't just give Millie her food bowls. We, um, we put her food, I put a piece of newspaper over her food and a rubber band. That's one way we feed her. Another way we feed her is hiding her food in phone books. And um, we have special toys that she has to manipulate to get the little window to open and get her food out. So she has captive foraging ways um, to eat in, in her cage. So I think those things probably weren't done for Millie for a good portion of her life. And because of that, just kind of like nervous habit of biting your fingernails, Millie developed a nervous habit of picking at her feathers because of boredom. My goodness, it sounds like children would have a lot of things to think about before they would choose having a bird as a pet. Yes, that's very true. Now, birds, uh, the bigger the bird, the longer they live. So a little parakeet, like the one I have here behind me, only lives for about 
10 to 12 years. And she's a whole lot easier to take care of than Millie. Um, that little parakeet has a, an enormous cage with a lot of toys. And she's a lot easier to um, keep happy and occupied. Uh, her enrichment is a lot easier than a super intelligent bird like Millie. So this bird, Millie, has about the intelligence of a three or four year old child. She has the ability to learn words and repeat them, but not just repeat them, but know what they mean. Um, and so parakeets don't quite have that level of intelligence from what we understand. And so they they don't need quite as much enrichment. So my one of my daughters is 11 and she has the parakeet in her room and she's not that hard to take care of really. That would be a really good starter pet uh, for a child would be a parakeet um, as long as the parent's involved. Um, they need a lot of cage cleaning and um, they really just love to hear noise and chatter. I'm really surprised she's not chattering right now. Yeah, but she's she knows you're on camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, what what does uh, your little parakeet do for fun? Her name is Wilma, um, and she loves to just hang from the bars of her cage. She's like a little monkey. Um, she also likes to tear up the newspaper on the bottom of her cage and make little nests out of it. She loves when people just sit and talk to her. Um, she especially likes when you're on the phone. That's when she does most of her chattering. Um, she's a good uh, TV partner. She'll sit and watch TV with us. Um, and she really loves a bath. When we put her water dish in there, that's the first thing she does is takes a bath in her water in the morning. And we have to change her water right away after she's had her bath. But um, she's a little yeah, so fun. It, it looks like um, you need to consider too, like equipment. That is some cage behind you there. That's, uh, that's a pretty large one. What it is, it's a large cage for a parakeet. Um, that probably could house three, three parakeets, honestly. But really for a bird, you wanna make sure that your cage is at least, you, if you think about the bird stretching their wings out completely, Will you stretch your wings out, Millie? No, she usually will do that. You wanna stretch your wings out? No, okay. <laughs> Think about the wing, wing span of the bird and you want a cage that is doubly wide to that. So if, you, if the bird should be able to stretch your wings out twice. Millie's cage is about six and a half feet tall by five feet across. Um, it's a very large cage. I can stand in her cage and stretch my arms out. And so, yeah, you definitely have to think about that, um, the, the size of the cage. And it's important to have a lot of toys in there too. Birds are destructive. That's just them. That's their nature is to inspect things, investigate things, chew on things. They have a very strong beak, at least the cytosines do, which are the hard beaked birds like parrots and parakeets. And um, so it's a normal behavior for them to destroy their toys. And so you have to kind of get creative and you can create your own toys with bird safe materials. And uh, you can purchase toys as well. There's a lot of different companies that make some good bird toys. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm gonna ask you again about uh, checkups. Yes. So um, checkups are good to do once a year, as long as you have a healthy pet. It's very important, to, no, no. It's very important to um, be able to recognize the signs of illness and recognize them quickly with a bird. Um, in, the, in the wild, birds fly in flocks and groups and the sick birds get left behind by the flock because a sick animal, a sick bird, puts that bird at the whole flock at risk for predators. So it's instinct for a bird to hide signs of illness. So if you are noticing that your bird is acting a little off, um, not as active, you want to jump on that right away because any sign of illness in a bird is sign of pretty severe illness in most cases. So 
Um, once a year annual wellness checkups, we recommend along with checking a little stool sample to make sure they don't have parasites. And as they get older, we'll recommend yearly blood work. Not everyone chooses to do that with their bird and that's okay. Um, but that's the kind of conversation we have with the annual checkup. Most uh, bird owners bring their birds in to have their nails trimmed um, about every three to four months because that takes special equipment and skills to do for the big guys. And not, not everyone's comfortable doing that at home. Um, some owners of, of birds choose to have their, the bird's wings trimmed every three to four months to make sure that they can't fly away if the door accidentally gets left open. Uh, that doesn't hurt at all. Feathers are like hair. They don't have nerve endings, um, except right where they're attached. So uh, it's okay to clip their, clip their wings. Other owners really believe in never clipping a bird's wings because, you know, they're, they're meant for flight. Uh, and so some owners tend to think that that's just not, not a natural thing and not fair to do for the bird. And that's okay as long as you keep them safe in their environment and uh, don't leave any doors open in your house. Um, special things we should consider uh, or, or really hard, hard things about raising a bird? Time that they take, that they take. I think that comes back to every pet, just making sure that you don't get a pet that you don't have the time for. Um, you know, they, we have choices in our lives about what, how we can spend our time for the most part. You know, we have choices. Maybe that's, you're just making the choice of, do I wanna play on my iPad or do I wanna go outside and kick the ball around or talk to my friends? You have choices. And these, these animals, they don't have as many choices. We control all of their choices. So it, it's our responsibility to make sure that they have a happy life. And that can be challenging with a, an Amazon parrot. Well, she's not Amazon, but she's a macaw who, who could live in the Amazon like Millie. That's hard to replicate in your house. So it is a big challenge. So again, it's important to read ahead of time and learn as much as you can and know that you're committing yourself to the lifespan of that animal. Are you ready to commit yourself to caring for a pet bird? If so, where do you start? To help us learn about the types of birds available at pet stores and what type of equipment we'll need, we talked with Ms. Leona at the pet store in Chambersburg. Well, some of the questions that I probably would start by asking is, have you had a bird before? Um, there are many types of birds here at the pet store, um, some starting better off for beginners, people who have never had a bird before or it's been a really long time. Um, and then there are more advanced birds and we'll go over them here. Um, some of the first beginner birds and the most popular is going to be the baby parakeets. That's these guys that you see in the center here. Um, they are probably about maybe six months of age, so still very young. Um, their colors actually will get more vibrant as they get older. Um, they are a community bird, so very social. They do very well in pairs. Um, they're, they're pretty uh, chatty right now. It's a little noisy. Um, that is parakeet nature, to be very chattery and very social. Um, some of their needs is another um, question I would ask. Um, parakeets and birds in general are very sensitive to their environment. So it is very important to keep them away from drafty windows and doors um, to make sure that they're in a warm, safe place, some place that's also semi-quiet. They don't do very well with a loud, crazy environment. A more advanced bird would be something like this guy right here in front of me. This is called a baby bork parakeet. Um, a little fancier and a little more um, high maintenance rather than just an ordinary parakeet. Um, his colors are obviously different. He's not uh, bright green or yellow or blue. He does have some coloring on, the, on his like belly and underneath of him. 
Um, it's more of like a pink or a purple. Very shy, not nearly as um, social and hand friendly as what the traditional parakeets are going to be. And why are these birds considered advanced? What makes them advanced care? Um, just because they need a little bit more. Now they all need the same needs as far as like food and nutrition and um, care for their cage. All of that is the same. But the only, the, what makes them so different is that these guys need more one-on-one -on -one attention. They're going to need more of a connective bond. So it's better for someone who is experienced in birds to own something like a work parakeet or even something like a red rump parakeet, like this guy over here. Um, they're larger than the traditional parakeets as well, which is probably not gonna be the best idea for a, a small children. So these birds that we have on our back wall bird unit, these are more of a um, watching bird um, rather than a hands-on interactive bird. Um, now all make great pets and they all are very um, community oriented. Again, they, they do well in pairs or in groups. Um, now let me explain the kinds that we have here. The two cages on the top are going to be yellow canaries. Um, the ones, the cages below are going to be groups of finches. Now there are different types of finches. Um, these ones, for example, are society finches, and these over here are called a weaver finch. These birds do not get any bigger than what they currently are. They are still considered um, adolescent or young babies, but they are not going to grow in size. These are the size that they will remain their entire lifetime. Um, again, just the same as the parakeets, they are very sensitive to their environment. Um, and they, it, it is very important for them to be in a warm, safe, quiet place. Um, the canaries are actually famous for singing and their different little tunes. They eventually, when they become comfortable in their environment, will sing songs or make up mimic sounds of things that they hear. Well, one of the most important things before you take a bird home is to make sure you have a cage for it or a home of some sort. Um, it is very, very important. You're gonna have a little bird friend flying all over your house. Now we have at the pet store many types of cages for many types of birds. Um, now the ones here beside me, these are gonna be for more of like your parrots or your cockatiels, birds that are you know, larger, probably about this big. Um, now we also have smaller cages um, that will be perfect for a finch or a canary, um, as well as medium in between cages that are good size for one cockatiel or maybe one to two parakeets. So the next most important thing to have a happy, healthy bird is going to be some food. Now, at the pet store, we have many different options as far as food, um, but the most important thing that goes along with that is making sure that you have the right type of food for the right type of bird. Um, there are different seed mixtures um, that can some birds can handle and some birds cannot handle, and that's determined by their beak size. Um, for example, a parakeet um, is going to need seeds that are going to be much smaller, like this. Little tiny seeds for their little tiny beaks. Whereas a parrot or a cockatiel is going to be able to handle those larger sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds. Um, another most important thing for any bird is going to be a cuddle bone. This actually helps birds file down their beaks and their nails. Um, it grows just the same as our fingernails do, and we have to keep them trimmed and filed. Um, so this is how a bird does it. They will um, scratch at this or pick at this with their beak, and that helps them to file down and groomed. All right. 
Um, another important thing that you're going to need for a happy, healthy bird is going to be some sort of vitamin. Um, now there are food mixtures that have vitamins and good proteins in them, but we also have vitamin sprays and vitamin tablets that you add into their water and then they drink it and get their vitamins that way. Everything needs vitamins to be happy and healthy in their life. Birds are the same. It's also very important for birds to have things to do. Um, here at the pet store, we have different toys for different birds. Um, there are many different bright colors, things that make noise. Um, this one here is for a larger bird, like a parrot or a cockatiel. There's some wooden pieces that they can kind of grab a hold onto and climb. Um, we also have some smaller toys, like this would be good for a parakeet or a canary. Um, it makes a noise, has a little bell on there that's going to interest them. Uh, we have a mirror down here as well. Now mirrors can be tricky with birds. Birds love to look at themselves in the mirror. They love the reflection, but it also, they can become friends with themselves and form a bond in the mirror. Um, so you have to kind of keep an eye and make sure that he doesn't become too afraid of you and more comfortable with himself and the reflection in his, in his mirror. <laughs> Remember, in order to have fun with your bird, you have to be willing and able to care for it. After all, birds are living things. And a pet bird's life depends on you. So do your research. And if you don't like cleaning up messes, if you don't like being around a lot of noise, if your family life is loud and hectic, if you're always on the go, a pet bird is probably not the right pet for you. Given the right environment, your time, and the right care, birds can make delightful and inspiring pets. Thank you for watching this episode of Fun with Pets. We hope you've enjoyed yourself and that we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.